This is Maberly, a small hamlet off Highway 7, just west of Perth. Now, it's a community with two kinds of people. The descendants of the original settlers, still scratching an existence from the land, and the newcomers, people who have come to escape city life. But one of the latter is Willie Nelson. He's known far and wide as the Maberly candle maker. Willie is also the creator of the Maberly monster. You'd have to say that he's an eccentric with a touch of genius. Willie has a passion for showing the unimaginable through his wax sculptures. He may be the stuff that legends are made of. I wonder if a hundred years down the road we won't be looking back in awe to the time when on the eve of all saints, Willie Nelson burned his monster of wax. He lives here on the bank of the Fall River with his wife, Veronica Earth, and their two young children. They make their living mostly from candles, but she also has a job right now working on an Ontario build project called Highway 7 Development. Its purpose is to create jobs in a depressed area. I have to be quite frank about, about meeting you today. Um, I have been looking forward to sitting down with you, Willie, because I don't know where the heck to start with you. I mean, the story, you, you know this thing that legends are made of? Hey, people have got to be just, they have to border almost, they have to have a touch of madness in them and, and just constantly on the fly. And that is how you're striking me. I'm constantly on the fly, I like guess. I like it just never a dull moment in my life. How about you? Oh, I can't keep up. I don't know what's going on from day to day, moment to moment. It's exciting, though. I cheated a bit today. I ended up talking with one of your neighbors and uh, wanted a little insight, as a neighbor would have, into the life of Willie Nelson. And it was just great the way he explained to me how, well, there's never a dull moment in town with Willie there. And I said, tell me a little more. And he said, well, Willie's the kind of guy that walked out of the house and come halfway across the yard and stop and scratch his head. <laughs> and he'd turn around, go towards the house, stop again, go to the garden, dig like crazy for about a minute, drop the shovel, go back in the house, come out of the house and zip into the workshop, and then all of a sudden in the car and he's gone. But we make a good combination because you are extreme and you give them all kinds of entertainment that I would never think of. And uh, I provide all the sort of secure, nurturing parts that kids need too. Uh, you provide any of that for Willie? He needs a lot, too. <laughs> she's Just been, like she's been my back. Without her, I could not have made any monster or been in, in going as far as I've gone without her. Because she's my backbone. It's Willie Nelson's Maberly Monster Bash, rocking to the music of the shock promising new group from Perth. Willie and Veronica were married on Halloween in a mock ceremony three years ago. Tonight, they're celebrating their anniversary. Now, here's a good look at Willie's latest and greatest creation, a 20-foot high monster of wax over burlap. People came by the hundreds to Doug Buker's farm just outside Maberly at $5 a throw to take part in the madness. By the way, I asked Willie if he was a little crazy. He said, yes, I think we're all a little crazy, but it's the crazy people that make life interesting. Well, ain't that the truth? Willie was working in his shop late one night on a creature of wax, 20 feet high, when suddenly a vision materialized. He'd have a party and set the creature on fire, so he held a bash. A monster bash, what a splash. It was a Maberly smash, the monster bash. It caught on in a flash, the monster bash. It was monstrous madness. Foolish old ladies and horrible old men. Long-nosed witches, even Dracula came. They danced and they drank well into the night. When Willie cried suddenly, does anyone have a light? Up the ladder with his gasoline can, Willie scaled his monster and soaked it with gas. As the ghouls and goblins stood in all around, Willie came down and when he hit the ground, he lit a match. The congregation gasped, he lit another match. It caught on in a flash, old Willie laughed. 
as the flames slowly rose till suddenly the monster appeared to explode and a cheer erupted from everyone's throat as the great wax monster quivered and shook. They all shook hands and they drank more beer. Don't you wish that you had been there? Willie, tell me, is it true what I hear? You're building a 35-foot monster next year. Has Willie gone mad, or has he started to fad? Will we all be burning monsters this time next year? Having a bash, a monster bash, having a splash, like the neighborly smash. Igor, bring me some wax. We're going to the monster bash. Marigo, don't forget the gas. Quickly now, give me more wax. No, no, Igor, don't eat the wax. We need it for the Mabel Monster Bash. Igor, Igor, bring back my wax, Igor. Come back, Igor. Igor, bring me back. This is often the case in life. Things are not always what they appear to be. For example, you may think you're listening to a pumpkin head, when in fact, you're listening to me. Now, my idea I've been called worse in my life than pumpkin head. So much for Country Report's Halloween Madness. I've had a lot of fun doing it. I hope you've enjoyed the show. And by the way, come Halloween, beware of wax monsters, the witch of Plum Hollow, Pumpkins and me. Don't you wish that you had been there? Willie, tell me, is it true what I hear? You're building a 35 foot monster next year. Has Willie gone mad or has he started to fad? Will we all be burning monsters this time next year? Having a bash, a monster bash, having a splash. Like the neighborly smash. Igor, bring me some wax. We're going to the monster bash. Remember, Igor, don't forget the gas. Quickly now, give me more wax. No, no, Igor, don't eat the wax. We need it for the neighborly monster bash. Igor, Igor. And now for something completely different from the quaint village of Maberly, just a few miles west of Perth. Different is perhaps an understatement considering who Charlie Greenwell recently dropped in on. The individual was a man called Willie Nelson. No, not the singer, but Willie Nelson candlestick maker, known locally as Monster Man. There can be no denying that Willie Nelson is different. He admits himself that he's something of an oddity, not what you might call your average man in the street. For starters, he's close to nature and everything that goes with it, including the ducks, hens, chickens, and anything else that just happens to roam past his workshop. He gets along so well with his feathered friends, he claims he can even hypnotize them. Abracadabra. 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 Okay. And this is just a sample of what Willie Nelson can do, as we were to soon find out when we entered his workshop. It's here where we were introduced to his two monstrous creations. This 17-foot high figure made out of 2,000 pounds of wax and his 10-foot tall associate. Willie, the $64,000 question, how did you get and sell the owl for ten or fifteen dollars. What about the big brown candle behind you? Oh, the big brown one. It's, well, rather than carrying a whole slew of candles around in boxes uh, to show what I can do, I make one candle with just about everything I can do in the one candle, like children's faces and fish, old men, up here, uh, Libra sign, elephant, birds and candles, and I use beeswax because it's easier to carve. 
and it was paraffin. I left it out here in the winter time; it would crack. But I use beeswax, and it doesn't crack. Is there a market? I know this is an example of your work, but is there a market for that kind of candle? Oh, I sold one candle for a thousand dollars. It was a forty-five gallon drum, and all I did was fill it with wax and chisel the metal off, and somebody bought it. Moving away from the conventional candles uh, to this not so conventional uh, figure here, how oh, did that come about? My monster. Well, as you know, there's twelve or thirteen wax museums in Niagara Falls, and I was bored. I went to one, went to the other, and they all had the same. And I was thinking maybe they need something different to attract people, and that's why I built this one, it's hoping that maybe that one of the wax museums would like to have it as an attraction, a public attraction. I'm intrigued at the number of hands I see, wax hands. Oh, the wax hands. Oh, yes. Uh, well, I do replicas of people's hands and faces. And uh, I like making hands, uh, especially children, and they can be bronzed. And it's nice that you have your hands of your children when they were very young, and when they're old, you can present them with your hand. Here's your hand when you were five years old. And they're nice keepsake items, as well as being not the cure, but it helps relieve the pain for arthritis. Well, they, they use wax in hospitals now, but paraffin wax. I add cayenne pepper to my uh, wax so that it penetrates into the bone. It does help. It does help uh, shrink swollen knuckles and stop pain. There's an interesting story about uh, black candles here, as you see. That, uh, it's actually against the law to make black candles or sell or burn black candles. Uh, it seemed to have been a cult in 1470 in England, uh, which, a group of witches who made black candles and burned them. And uh, the story has been told that uh, these witches were stoned to death and burned at the stake for making black candles. So there had been a law passed that uh, black candles are illegal, and the law still stands. I suppose you're probably wondering what this is about here. Well, I take my candles to the flea markets from time to time, and in the past, uh, in the past a year or two, uh, people just haven't been buying my candles. So I said, well, I'm going to develop some kind of a contraption to attract the people to my booth. So I built this, and it's just about mechanical parts, aircraft parts, and uh, rotors, and gyros, what have you. And I put it on my booth at the uh, flea markets. And people would just flock over, and they'd buy candles, and they'd say, what is this? I had to give it a name, so I call it a mechanism. And, uh, and, and two, that I use it to attract people to my booth, and it really works. As I said at the beginning of this story, Willie Nelson is different. The people of Maberly are still not quite sure how to take him or his house of wax. But as the old saying goes, the folks in these parts ain't seen nothing yet. It's Willie's ambition to become the local reeve. <laughs> We'll return with...
Yes, sir. Go. Uh, you better take that bottle away from him. Someone take the bottle away. Take the, pick the bottle up. Good boy. Take it over there where you got it and put it away. That's it. Take care of those things. You know, you're, you're an old man. You should know better than that. Okay, thank you for coming here this evening. I'm going to go over and, and uh, put some burlap on the hands and light the hands. Let the hands burn first. What TV channel?
Welcome to another edition of Rodeo Country on Cable 13. I'm Doug Trelovin, your host, and uh, today we uh, have a little bit of a different show. We have an interview with a Willie Nelson, not the country artist, mind you, but uh, the wax maker. He makes uh, wax candles such as these. He makes wax candles such as this brown one here that is scented like chocolate that he has uh, taken time out to sculpture. Well, a long way to uh, as best as he can anyway, but uh, his main forte is obviously making candles and we'll be looking at one of his main candles that has uh, created uh, quite, a, quite a bit of uh, uh, news and excitement in this town of Maberly. It's, a, it's a, a monster candle. It is huge, uh, 10 feet tall, has no name right yet, uh, does it? No, uh, we'll just call him... Uh, monster. Uh, question mark. Question mark. Monster the question mark. Question mark the monster. Whether it be burned or won't he be burned. Yeah, okay. But uh, this is Willie Nelson beside me from Maberly. And uh, Willie, you've got a very distinguishable name. And uh, well, you've got a Willie Nelson on the other side of the border there. Could you shed us a little light on the time you met the, the, the other Willie Nelson? Well, uh, people may may just may not reading my name right is I spell my name W-I-L-L-Y. A lot of people call me Wiley. But uh, I met Willie through my sister uh, who arranged for me to rendezvous with him. And the only way he would know who I was was a poster that he signed for my sister saying to Willie Nelson from Willie Nelson. And then when I uh, heard he was playing at the Civic Center, I, I, I called them up and they were ready for me and they just parked my car inside where the bandstand was and we met and my daughter was with me, Titania Nelson. No, this is my son, Daniel Nelson. And uh, we had a real good time. It was surely a heart highlight of, uh, of our lives to meet Willie. He's a fine person. And I'm hoping to meet him again uh, at his birthday party, which they call Willie Nelson Day, a national holiday in Austin, Texas, is where he's going to be having the great Texas uh, brain fry. 